Have you ever gone to a social media site and lots of people are are asking for help for their their rabbit problems? Comments like, help, how can I get my rabbit to stop chewing and digging? It happens over and over and over almost every day in one of my rabbit groups. Not like one person asking, but many people. And I just wanna have a moment of calm. My inside voice says, you do realize you have a pet rabbit, right? It's not a stuffed animal. Rabbits are chewers and diggers. It's part of their base nature. One of the areas where it's really important to do research before you decide that a pet rabbit is right for you and for your family is chewing and digging. These animals are natural chewers and diggers, though leading up to their adolescent period from like four to eight months old for most breeds, there is a heightened hormonal surge that begins to happen and the chewing and digging behaviors increase Spaying and neutering greatly help with these issues, but it is very important to remember chewing and digging are part of your pet rabbit's base nature. And if you cannot accommodate that in your home, if you cannot do correct bunny proofing, getting cords up out of the way, making sure that your rabbit is not one of the ones that chews and ingests, meaning swallowing and trying to digest cardboard, if that's the case, you need to get cardboard out of your rabbit's area. If you're not willing to do all those things to ensure your bunny's safety and also to accommodate their base nature, then pet rabbit ownership simply is not right for you. Because I am an educator and I do so much research, one of the things we see over and over and over is the blast out of the question, how can I get my rabbit to stop chewing? My rabbit digs the carpet. My rabbit does this. My rabbit does that. And I'm I'm not talking about one comment here or there. Like they're scattered everywhere on every Facebook page and the comments of YouTube videos, you know, on Instagram, on just even though in my videos on my website, on Instagram, Facebook, in these YouTube videos, in my book, Bunny Conversations, the entertaining dialogue of pet rabbits. I really try hard to state over and over that you cannot change the base nature of these animals. If you cannot accommodate those behaviors and also keep your rabbit safe from ingesting things that are harmful to him or her in your home, then you need to look at a different animal, a different pet for, you know, that might be a better fit for you and your family. As baby bunnies or correctly named kits or kittens, the um, after they you know, begin to stop nursing and start wandering around, they are going to start, you're going to notice an increase in their chewing and digging, as I said before, as they come up to their adolescent phase. And what you want to do, spay, neuter, get them all healed up, and find something in your home to accommodate those behaviors. They Rabbits always, always, always have to have some kind of safe wood to chew on. Out in the wild, when you study wild rabbits and the behaviors and what they do out in the wild, they come across woods and barks and they're constantly eating grass in the case of, you know, wild bunnies because there's not bales of hay laying around everywhere for rabbits to thrive on, like what we do in our homes. All of these hard woods and hard materials that wild rabbits come out across in nature help with not only keep their gut muscle strong, their digestion, but they keep their teeth ground down to a safe level. And in your home, you need to do the same thing with your rabbit. Your rabbit might be domesticated, bred for pet ownership, but it is still a rabbit. It is still in the lagomorph family, not a rodent. Rabbits are lagomorph. And one of the things about these animals is their teeth grow constantly, every single tooth in their mouth, all throughout their entire life. And if they do not have safe woods to chew on, they cannot keep their teeth at a proper length. And not only will the animals suffer if you don't provide them proper chewing materials 24 hours a day all the time, but you will also be faced with horrific, horrifically high, you know, veterinary bills if the rabbit even survives teeth surgeries, because a lot of times a rabbit going under anesthesia 
has complications and especially with dental. You know, there's one thing I studied when I was studying one of my classes in in the um, discipline of veterinary medicine. There's veterinary assisting classes and certifications you can take. Veterinary technician, which is uh, in some places is also called a veterinary nurse. And then also in veterinary medicine is the DVM or doctorate of veterinary medicine. I'm not going to go that far. I have no interest uh, so far in all my classes that I have paid for. They haven't even mentioned rabbits except in the context of agriculture or animals. So one thing I learned early on studying the history of veterinary medicine was that way back in the day, dogs and cats, veterinarians did not focus on them. There was a time when veterinarians only focused on livestock like horses and sheep and cows. And then the combustible engine came along and veterinarians, of course, the horse population diminished because horses weren't need for transport, needed for transportation anymore. So the veterinary focused, uh, veterinarians focused on dogs. And back at that time, which wasn't all that long ago uh, in history, dogs were seen as hunting. That that was the use, you know, very, there was very few pet ownership circles uh, in the context of dogs. And cats, the only value that they had, that society viewed them as, as valuable, was to kill rodents and snakes. So dogs, when the combustible engine came on scene, the need for veterinary services in regards to horses diminished greatly, and they started focusing on dogs as pets. And then it wasn't until like the 1960s or 1970s where cats became a focus of veterinary medicine. Well, now fast forward into the 2000s, and even though veterinarians, some veterinarians have treated rabbits throughout history, it's been more of a con- in a context of agriculture use. The value of pet ownership in the context of veterinarian services has, has been fairly recent, at least here in America. And so we're having the same struggle that cat and dog owners had way back in the day before they were viewed as valuable pets, valuable house companions. And we're kind of fighting that education battle right now. And, and that's happening all over the world, not just here in America. So one of the things we have to realize in the context of these animals being house rabbits, domesticated rabbits, is that they have behaviors that we humans cannot and should not try to change. What we have to do is try to accommodate them. That is why on House Rabbit Society, on other websites where uh, people have worked with rabbits, you know, 24 hours a day in the context of house rabbits, pet rabbit ownership, they say, be careful where you get your information. You may know somebody down the street or in the farm out in the, in the boonies somewhere that has raised rabbits, quote, raised rabbits for 30 years or 20 years. And so you want to get a pet rabbit and you're going to go talk to that person who might be a breeder or might be raising rabbits solely for 4-H, or might be raising rabbits for meat and selling them that way. Do you really want to get your information on longevity and health of an indoor pet rabbit? Uh, Or even if you have your rabbits outside, but they're still house rabbits and they're your pets, your main pets, you take care of them. You're not just throwing them in a barn or a bunch of hutch, wire bottom hutches outside where they live in filthy conditions and they're killed before age one, is that really the best place to get information on responsible pet ownership and how to take care of your pet rabbit so that he or she sees a long and healthy life? No. Just the same, unless you have a veterinarian, even though that they're experts, and again, I've I've, uh, do my best to study not only uh, whatever subjects I can pay for and classes I can get into in the field of veterinary medicine, but also I dig up science papers and read about the biology and read peer reviews and read scientific papers so that I can better understand this the nature of these animals. Your veterinarian, even though he or she does a lot of spay and neuters on rabbits and is really good with that medical part, the biology part of rabbits, he or she might have no idea what it's like at home to be a house rabbit owner, to have a pet rabbit inside his or his or her house. Like any other thing in life, unless you're doing it and you've tested out the toys, oh, that one's unsafe, like Jenna balls. Don't give your rabbits Jenna balls, even the little tiny ones. It, rabbit's teeth clamp down in such a way to, to where it's like a vice if they get their teeth caught in the ball that has holes in it. Yet all over the internet and YouTube, these uh, people that have videos on they're they're really selling their videos on how cute my rabbit is and 
go to the Dollar Tree and get these toys and which I'm not against Dollar Tree. I, I you can get like natural wood wreaths at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. You know, they don't have any stain on them. They don't have any um, glue on them. They're, they're good for rabbits. They can uh, be a good chew toy for rabbit ownership. So I'm not saying don't get anything that's inexpensive. I'm saying that I'll, in mixed of all those videos for some of the channels that have really big viewership and lots and lots of subscribers, some of that stuff is dangerous that they're saying. And because they have one rabbit and they've had one rabbit at home, they want to grow a YouTube video based on the cuteness really either of them or their rabbit and that's unfortunate because a lot of bad ed education gets distributed that way all that to say that your veterinarian whether they're an exotic pet veterinarian or not there's a rabbit specialty that veterinarians can get on top of their exotic pet specialty their degrees unless your your veterinarian has rabbits at home in the home they're not gonna necessarily have any information more than what you can get on the internet about safe toys why you want to be careful with cardboard, even though that's a very popular thing. Hey, just throw some boxes of cardboard in. Definitely you can try cardboard boxes and tunnels. We use them here for some of the rabbits that I have. But some of the rabbits I have, some of the rescues, ingest cardboard. And we actually had a rabbit die some years ago because of a blockage created by cardboard. It's not just a matter of tossing something in with your rabbit and seeing, oh, that's a good chew toy. You, you do have to accommodate that chewing behavior. You have to accommodate their digging behavior, but do it safely. With regard to chewing, see if there are cardboard bits where the rabbit's been chewing around your cardboard box. If not, then take the box away and find a different chew toy. Find a different tunnel, buy a cat tunnel that's safe or some other Heidi toy that is safer for your rabbit. So that, that to me, that's just common sense. You watch your rabbit, you see that he or she is not ingesting, swallowing, whatever little bits he's chewing off. And it helps even when you have a solid wood, hardwood chew toys. And there's plenty you can get on. There are plenty of things you can get on Amazon. There are plenty of things you can probably even buy at Walmart. Or I haven't really found anything um, too great at a pet store. But because rabbits are, are nature, they're creatures of nature, you know, think of them as part of the natural world. Like you can go find in the summertime really thick fir branches or something and cut them into sections and bake them in the oven, you know, rinse them off with vinegar, bake them in the oven for two or three hours at a temperature of maybe 300 degrees to kill any parasites or kill any bugs or anything that might be in them. And just simply put that round piece of a thick limb, tree limb, in as uh, in your rabbit's primary enclosure in his or her space wherever he or she roams or plays and that gives him or her a really great chew toy so think outside the box with some of this stuff you don't have to go to a store and and um, pay excessive amounts of money for things that might be dangerous for your pet rabbit and again be very careful where you're getting your information from you want your pet rabbit to have a healthy safe happy long life so you wouldn't go to someone who is not in the business of providing those kind of um, that kind of education or that kind of like if like I was uh, saying previously, if you're going to a farm that's raising that's maybe raised thousands of rabbits for meat, I personally would discount like they might know a lot about breeding rabbits and when they're little babies and all this, but they're not they don't have the same goal that you have with your animal and. I, again, I'm only in support of responsible pet ownership. I'm just bringing that up as an example because, unfortunately, that's still part of our world. People breed rabbits in their backyards and sell them at Easter time. It's very unfortunate that the people are still buying them because that would stop if the market would shut down on that. It's unfortunate that they use rabbits and show them at places like fairs. Even, even if kids can get some kind of education, that's not the best way to go about it. A rabbit fills the temperature outside 15 to 20 degrees hotter than it than, than you or I do. So if it's 90 degrees outside and he's stuck in a little wire cage with all kinds of loud noises around at a fair, you know, at a county fair or a state fair, that rabbit is suffering in so many ways. And it's just, you know, there's a lot of people that like like to see that shut down. There's a different way to educate kids. There's a different way to, a better way to treat these animals. Just to bring the topic back home, I wanted to show you these little natural wood wreaths that I always am able to find at the dollar store. They're not treated. They don't have glue. Cut the tags off and secure them to the side of the 
gate, pet gate, or fencing in a primary enclosure, or even somewhere on your wall if your bunny, if your home has been bunny proofed and it's safe for your bunny to free roam, you can put these little things up against a wall so that the bunny can just go up to it and it's sturdy and he can get a nice little grinding of his teeth by chewing the little bits off of these wooden wreaths. The other thing that I have found are these sanded wooden dowels. They're natural wood. They're not stained. I would be careful putting them right down in the bunny's play area unless it's up against a wall or, you know, up against the side of the gate. This could even be attached to a wall like right over the crown molding so that your rabbit could come up and have something to chew on that could help also grind his teeth down. Fibrous hay like Timothy hay and even grass haze and other oat bromine hay. Those things also help your rabbit's teeth stay ground down. But chewing is, again, not just for grinding teeth. It's necessary, 100% necessary, to have something hard, like hardwood, to chew on all the time. But it is also a part of your rabbit's base nature. So provide something to chew. And then on the digging side of it, a lot of people have indoor dig boxes. I would not put newspaper in an indoor dig box just because... Newspaper gets sopping wet from urine and it starts sticking to your animal and then your animal is going to get scalding on the skin and, and all kinds of, that. you know, rabbits have very fragile skin and they don't, you don't want your rabbit to start urinating in its dig box and then for that, whatever material is in it to start scalding his paws or legs or, or tummy. Uh, so be careful with the materials you put in a dig box. No wood shavings as a dig box material. That is because as a rabbit digs, and there are safe wood shavings that, you know, there's a lot of misinformation about wood shavings. You actually need to pull the original wood shavings report, the scientific study, to understand how that that information has gotten spread around and really is just a world of rumors when it comes to wood shavings and rabbits. So I don't want to get into that right now. That's a different topic. But in my book, Bunny Conversations, I have a really great example for how to make an indoor dig box and it's safe and you can use like those wood pellets that you would burn in a stove. There are fur pellets you can use. There are, are safe materials, of course, never ever use cat litter, clumping cat litter, scented cat litter. Their, the rabbit's lungs are much too fragile and the dust that doesn't bother a cat in the same way is going could kill your rabbit. So cat litter... To me, in my estimation, cat litter is made for cats. Just don't use it for your rabbits. That's that's kind of my rule of thumb with that. Just do a little research. Be responsible um, with your pet rabbit ownership and accommodate his or her chewing nature. It's part of their base nature. You're not going to change it and you shouldn't try. And accommodate their digging nature. They're going to dig on carpeting. So go to the Dollar Tree or somewhere and get some low pile carpeting and put it over your existing floor. They shouldn't be on slick floors anyway. So if you have a slick floor, this is particularly important so that they're, you know, they don't have calluses on their toes like other animals do or pads on their feet. They just have slick fur. And plenty of rabbits have gotten injured spines and legs because owners let them just exist on slick floors everywhere. Well, that's that's a very risky thing to do. And it's dangerous for your pet. Even if your pet gets used to it, it's still dangerous. So the carpeting, getting carpet squares like, again, at the Dollar Tree or at Walmart or at a carpet store, something that's low pile that your rabbit can just dig and dig and dig at and can't really get fibers out of it. That's a really great thing to do to accommodate the digging nature of your rabbit. And then, of course, if you have an outside area that's safe, you can make a dig box and actually put organic dirt in it and your rabbit will just have so much fun making tunnels and holes. In discussing chewing and digging, being part of your rabbit's base nature is just part of the animal itself and the type of animal it is. Don't try to change it, but rather find ways to accommodate it. And making a dig indoor dig box for your rabbit if you cannot take him outside for outdoor playtime, supervised outdoor playtime, Indoor dig boxes are really a great way to accommodate the digging behavior as are carpet squares. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope this information was helpful to you. Please click the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. As always, be kind to animals and thank you for caring. Mm -hmm.